Hi, my name is Wali Akudai and welcome to Mailbox. Hi, I'm Adisho. On today's episode of Mailbox, we'll be addressing different mails from different people all over the world. Our first question today is um, Susan from Bielsa. She said she has a stalker. So she said for a year plus, I've been dealing with a stalker who has refused to stop despite all efforts. I've involved the police and he has been arrested twice but released. From sending unsolicited messages and pictures on social media to constantly showing up at my house and office, it's becoming scary. What do I do? Essentially, when you have situations that are based on human characteristics, which means um, probably things along the lines of character defects, you need to have an understanding that man is a spirit, he has a body and has a soul. Right. And when you want to change people to stop a certain attitude or a certain pattern, the only way is essentially to study the Word of God and to pray consistently over that particular issue. We understand that human beings can't change. They can only change by the help of God. And what God does is to minister to their spirit to cause there to be a lasting change. Right. Okay, so um, so for me, I think um, she said they've actually gone to the police. So it implies that there, there would be detailed from the police station on mm. really the reason why she's talk he's talking her. Right. Because some issues can actually be addressed. You know, some people, they stalk people. Some just like people right. and they can't approach them. Right. Some, there are issues. Right. So I think they also need to get to the root of the problem, you know? So, I mean, if you have, if you engage the stalker, you mm. have a conversation mm. on the reason why, mm. you know? Mm. I mean, I'm sure that would... So, so typically, if a force, which yeah. is meant to be like a law um, situation, has put you to check several times and you're not stopping, so you will see that there is a fundamental flaw on the inside of the person but that, that is probably bringing the, guy, the person. Right? Of course, if the person has been, uh, um, police has apprehended this person, mm. had a conversation with this person, there's been a repeat of this thing over and over again, then there is a fundamental, I mean, if, if the person is not afraid of going to jail anymore, so right. what's the worst that could happen? Mm -hmm. So to cause a lasting change in that kind of person really is to take it to the highest level, which essentially is a God mediating between both of you, such that the entire thing actually can stop for real. Right. That's what I believe, and that's that's what I've been practiced. Right. If you ask me. Right. So the solution essentially is this: the particular conversation must be taken to the courts of God, where God becomes the mediator in the middle of this particular. Now, people do not understand that everything that has to deal with the human being as fundamentally on the background, the spirit of that human being. Right. So when you can speak to the person's spirit, and the only person who can effectively, effectively do that is God. So she should just go to God in the place of prayer. I, I, absolutely. On, uh, probably, okay, over time. Over time. Know, so what will happen is that just... you will, the, the guy himself would not know what will make him stop. He just, re, he the, just, just decides that, you know what, I'm done with this particular conversation. In fact, the guy might be empowered by you taking him to the police to say, is this what, is this your best? Which is the human um, handling this particular thing, right. which is there's an in human intervention. Every time you do any of those things, it really wouldn't stop. Yeah. And I can see that in usually most of problem solving in general for humanity, so to speak, if, I mean. Okay, so I, I hope we've been able to address your question. Susan from Bielsa. Yeah. All right, Susan from Bielsa, thank you for that question. I hope this helps and we would like to get your feedback if it's worked, right? Um, we move on to the next question and this is someone who says is addicted to pornography and masturbation. Says I was molested as a child and introduced to pornography and masturbation at age 11. I'm a Christian, but there is nothing I haven't done to stop. It always feels like a spirit possesses me, and once I'm done, I feel bad. I really need to stop. Help me, please. Okay, so um, Sami from Kenya, um, we hear you loud and clear. We can read your message. I think um, you shouldn't stop praying. That's the truth. Because um, most times when we have um, situations like this, we just expect like an instant um, solution. Right. And you know, in the power of prayer, it's like a gradual process. 
it, it will just happen just like that because this is a situation beyond your control. It's not like, I mean, there's really nothing you can do about it. So I just, I would also admonish you that you should continue praying. There's power in, the, um, in, in your word of prayer. I'm sure in, in no time. I, I agree. I agree with you to totally. You know, in Second Corinthians chapter three, there was a conversation Paul was trying to address. You know, to to the church in Corinth, and he was speaking about their two technology. I will use the word technology. In fact, in the Good News Scriptures, it was using the word. Um, it says a system. It says there is a particular system that is operational. So there is what they call the law and what they call the spirit. What happens is that the, there is a law which Moses brought, which has his own glory, and there is a spirit. Now, what happens in, aside from masturbation, any habit whatsoever, smoking, what, whatever that thing is, so to speak, to break the power in that thing, you must apply the principle of meditation and prayer, like you said. You know, um, but, but there is the, I mean, if somebody, for instance, consistently meditates on the word, um, I'm a new creature in Christ. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Mm -hmm. That particular conversation begins to get corrected. Now you can't even get into a deep meditation without praying. Yeah. So when you pray, you study the Word of God. God brings to you a particular scripture that helps you break that particular habit. Now, like she's made mention, it's not a situation that happens overnight. It's not that now that we prayed, tomorrow you stop. You know, and this is one of the things that brings people on, onto that condemnation. So it gets into a place where, you know, yes, I've prayed. And that's why this person says, says, I've been a Christian. There is nothing I haven't done, right? It's important you put that aspect of meditation to work. When you do that consistently, you will actually break that habit and you will break that And pattern. then I think also, so in even praying, your mindset is actually important as well. So there's a way we pray that and we will focus on that thing. Exactly. If you're praying, just accept that God is dealing. Right. You understand? Right. So that it won't look like, okay, so I pray about masturbation. Yeah. Uh, okay, what's going to happen? Yeah. Just take your mind off. You just yeah. see that. It's just like a word of faith. I agree. Like if you're trying to process something or you're dealing with God, just see it that is done already. Correct. So just walk in that line, Correct. and before you know it, I'm Fan sure um, I'm sure everything would be Fa would be fine with you. Fantastic. Our last story for today is from Chinwe. Chinwe from Ibadan. She says, "My mother-in-law turned Omungwa to vacation." <laughs> well, sorry, <you're> laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I gave birth to my second child two weeks ago. As it's expected, my mother in law came for, for Omugo. However, instead of helping out, all she does is bath the baby and leave the rest to me, including taking care of her. There's really no point in her stay as she's adding to my body. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny? Why are you doing this? <laughs> my husband is a mommy's boy, which makes it difficult. What can I do? It's a so fun... Wale, I think maybe you first of all start from telling us what Omugo is because <laughs> all right, it's a, it's a it's an yes. international audience, right? So mm. typically in the African setting, what you have is that um, when you give birth to a child, um, technically the some your mother, whether it's the the what's it called now, um, the lady's mother or the husband's mother comes to take care of the baby. Usually, it's meant to be you, the mother-in-law, taking care of the baby because the woman should, uh, well, the one who gives birth to a baby should be weak or is expected to be weak at that point in time, not necessarily being able to move around and all of that. Now, when this usually happens in that particular setting, you get to see that the mothers are meant to be hands-on, you know, moving around, but she has a peculiar situation. The husband is quite um, close to her mom, and so there's this challenge of how do we get this person out of this hair so that we can actually have some, you know, some semblance of help. You know, obviously she's not getting the help that she's that she needs. Now, truth about the matter is that there is the conversation that needs to be done between the husband and the wife, right? If he's a mommy's boy, he's going to hear all these complaints along the lines of you mumbling and don't want our mom to stay right again um as much as people don't we kind of have this particular kind of conversation about 
um, you know, where people are on the defensive when certain situations are presented to them mm -hmm. to say, Mom, you are meant to be helping. This is not what it is that so you're doing. The guy doing. would rather even be diplomatic. That's what you find around most times because it's your mom we're talking about that's here. true so that's usually true. the guys are always diplomatic right. you know right mm -hmm. so so essentially I, I think the the kind of situation is to look for a way in which you fast fast track a living or better still you actually bring the necessary help mm. you know in place so you've got to, there's what they call the law of substitution the moment the mom sees that even the beating of the baby has now been taken care of because you've got to look you've got to put that i mean it's wisdom you've got to put her in a position whereby she sees that what she calls help has now been you know taken care of so mm -hmm. to speak mm -hmm. and then leave her to a point in time where you know she sees herself redundant in that particular situation right right and ask herself you know what else am i supposed to be doing and so you would even see that from her story thank god you said I gave birth to my second child, right. meaning it's not even the first, course, you know, so. if it was the first now, maybe there's a bit of concern that, oh, right. maybe you don't know how to go about it. Exactly. So since it's the second, I think first, what people should understand about help is that when somebody is helping, don't always have that mindset that the person is the solution. Hmm. Are you getting yeah. it? So for her, because I mean, one way or the other, the woman will still live. Whatever has a beginning must have an end, <laughs> definitely, right? She definitely. will still live. Definitely. And then in marriage too, there are some of the qualities that one must actually have. Patience is one of it. I agree. Because you are dealing with people from different homes. Don't forget that your, your husband is involved. Your husband mom is involved. You are involved. There are also a lot of things that you still deal. Yeah. And at, at whatever time she's staying, she's like, it's, it's not like she's staying forever. Yeah, right. So it's just important for her to just take up the job as if... The mother-in-law is not, not even there. around. Yeah. So it gets to a point that everybody sees that she's already so what dealing. Are you doing? And then you would also be asking yourself, even as the mother-in-law, that ah. It looks like I'm no longer you, needed. You understand right. what I'm saying? So right. I think you yourself just try and, you know, try and see the situation like I I would I don't want to use the word you are alone, but you're actually <laughs> you're actually alone <laughs> you're tr try and try and just adjust see, adjust and um chingwe from ibado i hope we've been able to um, help you with that help help you with that so that will be all on today's episode of mailbox see you next episode next god bless <laughs>